Good morning, my friends. Welcome to the Fitness from Bradley podcast. So this week is episode six. The title is Common Fitness Questions and Myths, part one. We'll jump right into it. And the first one is using cardio and jogging as your sole mechanism to get in shape and to lose fat. In my opinion, jogging five, and I, I, I did do this at one point. I went through almost a whole year of running three miles a day um, and up, up to seven or eight miles five times a week. And what we find in the literature when that happens is if our sole mechanism for movement and exercise is to go on a you know 30 minute to an hour jog every day of the week or five plus days of the week we will actually our body will be looking to lose muscle so muscle is very healthy and we also want to retain our lean mass it, it helps us be metabolically active it, it helps us store calories it just does a lot for us and if you're running every single day and in, in, in an attempt to l- drop some weight either drop the last five pounds or drop the first 10 pounds or to get in shape what you'll actually see is you will drop weight but you will drop a lot of water weight and then muscle and maybe some body fat as well but your body looks to be more efficient at running when that is your your main mechanism of movement. So it will look to become less heavy and more more aerodynamic, if you will. And it will look to be to drain off that muscle and and it also works to if you're you're running running a lot like that most days, it's putting a lot of wear and tear and stress on your knees and your joints and your body in general. And what a lot of people don't realize is to counteract that stress and, and, and the wear and tear on the body through running, you really need to be fueled properly. But more than likely, if you're running to lose weight or get in shape, you're, you're looking toward and, and looking to be in a calorie deficit. So you're more than likely going to be underfed. Plus the running all the time is just going to drain off your, your muscle and not allow you to maintain it. And so there's a big thing out there that, you know, oh, I'm going to drop this weight, I'm going to get in shape, I'm going to start eating less, eating better, and I'm going I'm to go run in and do high intensity cardio. I'm going to go and do 30 minute high intensity, get killed by a coach four days a week, and then I'll lose this weight. Well, when your body is looking to adapt to that mode of, of, of exercise, it, it looks, like you said, it looks to be more efficient at that exercise. So if we're looking to run and to jog all the time, our bodies are going to, like I said, we're going to be looking to, to become less heavy and to become more efficient at running. And what I propose, in my opinion, a more sustainable and more beneficial way to approach your fitness and approach your movement and exercise would be to adopt a moderate lifting pro- program as well as light walking, light, light daily walking. And so for me, and what I've seen in research and seen with clients and seen with friends and family, that adopting a moderate lifting regimen two to four times a week, two at the, at the least, that all you need to do is work out every Monday and Friday, lift some weights, and then the rest of the days of the week go on to one to two walks daily. And I feel that this strategy yields more desirable results and is, is will be more beneficial. It'll help you to build and maintain muscle. It'll have, it, it'll enact a positive hormonal response in your body. Lifting weights will, makes you more resilient to stress and stressors in, in the other part of your day. Helps with blood flow, like helps with muscle maintenance, helps with clearing met- metabolites from your, from your blood and your muscles and healing and recovering. It sends chemicals to your brain that are, are extremely healthy and good for cognitive clarity and, and brain cleaning, so just to keep yourself tidy. So. Um, when we have buildups in the brain is where we lead to things like Alzheimer's and dementia later on in life. So when we're going through and lifting, lifting weights and then we're going for a walk and we're getting those hormonal and those, the, that exercise stimulus, it has much more, I, I feel like it has much more benefits in the body and the brain than just sim- simply jogging every day with the host of some negative benefits that come with that. And so what I like to say is, you know, adopt a moderate lifting program go on daily walks, and then you sprinkle in your cardio slash running like toppings on a cake. You want to run one to time, one two times a week if that is one of your goals. And what that does is it'll increase your conditioning. It'll increase your work capacity. It'll increase your cardiovascular and heart health. So adding some cardio and some jogs and and things in once or twice a week um, on the days you're not lifting can be very beneficial to like increase your, your overall conditioning, like your 
capacity to run and, and to walk up steps and not be out of breath and to just be generally healthy, as well as increasing your work capacity. So if you are more conditioned and more able to go on those jogs a couple times a week, it, it, will, can, it, it can increase your work capacity in the gym, making you stronger, more able to hand, handle more sets, more weight, which will lend to stronger sets, the stronger body and, and more weight being moved, which equals more muscle and more strength. And so, like I said, the, the first common question, fitness question or myth, you know, is to get in shape. Should you jog all the time and run and go into calorie deficit? I say no. I say you should eat in a modest calorie deficit, maybe more than that, and lift weights a couple times a week, go on light walks. And I think that you will see a much better boost in a lot of things and a much better outcome and more and more desirable results from a regimen like that. So moving on, the, the second common fitness question and slash myth is that you should consume protein and carbs immediately after a workout. So I'll say that this, this really this really has been has come out and seems like it's a industry agenda. So these protein supplement companies have come out with all these whey protein shakes and fast acting protein. So they have put it out there that our bodies need to walk out of the gym or as they're walking out of the gym, be consuming a protein shake to shoot muscles, to shoot protein into the muscles and to also have some carbohydrate to replenish glycogen. And you have this window that you can't miss and such. There's researchers literature out there to slightly support some of these things, but it, everything depends and the nuances of individuality and how hard are you training and what do you do, what is your job, these all things, the, all these things are real and they pertain to the bio-individual each time. And so, to be honest, if you're not training twice a day or you're not an athlete who is training two to three times in team sports, it's five, six days a week, and then you really don't need to leave the gym and go straight to food. Um, it, the re research shows that over your 24-hour cycle, if you had a moderate, good workout, a decent lifting workout, and maybe some walking later in the day, the foods that you eat, the protein and carbs that you eat over that day span will refill eventually to the by the end of the night to the same level that it would have been if you ate 30 minutes after your workout or 20 minutes after your workout. One thing I will say is if you, like me, I'll go into a moderate lift and it ends up becoming an intense lift and I'm doing some deadlifts and squats. And if I am doing an intense workout or training session like that and I am feeling very fatigued and a lot of uh, heavy lifting, I will aim to go get me a post-workout meal of proteins and carbs within 30 to 45 minutes of, of the session. But that's if I feel like I ran myself into the ground and it was a very intense session, which you should only have one or two of those a week. We shouldn't be having three, four, five, six sessions where you're running yourself into the ground and you need post-workout nutrition. It's hard to recover from. It's a lot of stress and body stress on your body and joints. It's a lot of mental stress as well. So we want to do just enough to elicit that response to get the positive health benefits and the muscle building and the strength building. We don't want to push past that point of diminishing returns. So we want to get a good return on our investment. You want to put good investment in, get a good investment out, not invest all of this time, and it's not really up in your return. So there is no big need for immediate intake. And like I said, for most people, for the general population, for 90% of people, we are going to our gym, we're getting stronger, we're getting healthier, we're feeling good. We wanna leave that workout feeling good, not feeling run into the ground, like we need to shove something into our faces to be alive. And so, so it's it's beneficial to, when you see it this way, it's beneficial to have your, some definitely have some protein and carbs over the day, and definitely have some protein and carbs from whole and nutritious foods at night. So when we eat, when we get proteins from whole quality meats and we get carbs from clean carb sources, sweet potatoes, potatoes, rice, oats, things like that, that reacts really well in our body and it helps to, to restore our body and to make it stronger in, in like a natural way. And when we take supplements and we, we aim to get all of our dextrose and carbs or most of our protein and all that from whey, those things aren't whole foods. It, they will go in the body, but they will, it, our bodies react better with a whole food source of these things. And so if you're not training yourself into the ground like you shouldn't be, then you should aim to get your protein and carbs from whole foods over the day and especially at that dinner time so that as you sleep and as you go into your uh, the your daily next morning fast, if you're doing that, those carbs at, in the nighttime meal as they digest throughout the night and going into bedtime will replenish your stores and you will be ready to go for the next day and feeling and should be feeling good and ready for another training session or maybe you're light walking or just feeling good in general. 
And so, like I say, the second myth is to consume carbs and proteins immediately after a workout. Like I said, it's not nece it's not very necessary unless you're an athlete training multiple times a day, you're somebody who's training twice a day, or you had a very, very intense session. So the third one for today is a common fitness question or a myth that I will say is training all the time. And so a lot of people get into, all right, I, wanna, I have a goal, I wanna lose this much fat by this date, or even I just wanna lose the 20 pounds, or I wanna gain 10 pounds of muscle. And so they hit it really hard, and they go into this training all the time syndrome, where they're just going Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Saturday's hit training, high intensity interval training, Tuesday's high intensity interval training, Monday's a heavy lift, Wednesday has soccer, a run, and a lift. And so you see that people are really training all the time, and that is, really overworking the body and you're not allowing your body to adapt and recover back to baseline and over baseline to make you stronger and more able. And so the reality is great results come from and with just enough of a great or good stimulus from your workout and with optimized recovery and sleep. I'll say that again, great results come with just enough of a great or good stimulus and with optimized recovery and sleep. Say you're working out two to four times a week at most plus light walking. That is a great regimen. If you're, you're, eating whole nutritious foods, washing your food intake, you know, getting 80% of your food intake from quality um, whole foods and 20% your, you know, your meals, your cheat meals, your carb meals, your carb refeeds, things like that. And then you're adding those two to four times of lifting in a week as well as light walks daily. I feel that that, that is, is just enough for 90% of people to be in a, have a great physique, be in great shape, and have great health. So two to four times a week, plus light walking. When we're training all the time, we're possibly not allowing our muscles to fully recover and adapt to be stronger. This will also increase stress and joint stress on the joints in the body. When we're overtraining and we're not allowing ourselves to recover, then our, our joints and our connective tissues, they really suffer. So even if your muscles aren't sore anymore and you're like, oh, I'm ready to go, your knees and your shoulders and your joints and your connective tissues in there and your cartilage, things like that are are, are not going to be fully recovered yet and you can't feel those or, or measure that right here. So need to be very mindful of, of our bodies and all the mechanisms and biomechanics of our body, what needs to heal, what needs to get better, and even if you can't feel it, it it's growing, it's getting better if you're doing it, doing your routine intelligently. And so what I will say is what happens when you're training all the time is it really increases the likelihood of being underfed and malnourished. So when we're training all the time and we're trying to eat enough food to catch up to that, even if your goal is fat loss, then we still need to be eating, getting in enough of the of nutrients, healthy nutrients, healthy fats, and protein for the for to have the processes in the body to operate well. And another one I will say on, on a side note is to make sure that you have the correct a, a good amount of minerals and electrolytes in your body as well at, at any given time, especially if you're in a fasted state. Being low in minerals or a certain kind of mineral, no matter what your what your what your goal is, if your brain and your body don't have the minerals and electrolytes to send electrical electrical signals and think properly, correctly, and efficiently, then you can't really do anything. If you want to go for a walk or a jog or a workout today, but you can't even think straight, more than likely you may not decide to do it. And so what happens when we train all the time is we increase the likelihood of being underfed and malnourished, which really is can, can lead into possible energy and adrenal problems, which can lend itself to metabolic adaptation. And so if we're training all the time, we're being underfed, our body will adapt to that calorie amount. So if you feel like you're training a lot, five, two, twice a day, five times a week, you're only eating 1,200 calories. But if you go a little bit over that, your body is gaining weight. It's because your body possibly has become metabolically adapted to your state because you're only putting in this amount of calories, you're, you're working out this many times a week, and it's only getting in this amount of protein. So your body's going to be like, all right, for three months, we've only had these exact numbers of things and this amount of exercise. We're going to adapt so we can become good and efficient at that, at this calorie amount. So a good idea to come out of those, those moments is to lessen, lessen your training and to up your food intake, what you call like a possible reverse diet where you slowly increase your calories. But we're also gonna change, change the regimen to only lifting two to four times a week, having optimal recovery. We're gonna look at optimizing sleep and stress management. We're gonna look at meditation techniques, proper breathing, breathing through your nose, thinking good thoughts, being well-fed, well-nourished, well-mineralized and hydrated. And so when you start to look at these, what you would call pillars of health, you know, the sleep, the movement, your overall health and, and all the things that you check on, you know, your mood, your energy, your, your, how you feel day to day, how you sleep, how you wake up and how you fall asleep and the quality of that sleep. We're going to begin to look at all these pillars 
exercise a little more intelligently and, and allow the body to have a, have a stimulus from a workout, but then still giving it time to recover adequately so it can build that build, build back stronger. Then we're going to increase the nutrient intake so that you're, you were increasing your veggies and quality meats and healthy fats and clean carb intake so that you're getting the nutrients your body needs to thrive. And what you'll see with a lot of people is when you put them on a more, you know, lifting a few two times throughout the week, add the daily walking in, they're eating whole and nutritious foods and they're bumping up those calories, your body will start to kind of loosen that grip on that metabolic adaptation. It'll start to go into that thrive state. It's like, oh, we're getting more nutrients. Oh, we're training, but then we're having time to build. Oh, we have we have a lot of protein coming in. We have more micronutrients coming in. We feel better. Your body's going to adapt. It's going to grow stronger. And you're going to eventually be able to eat more food. You're going to build more muscle. And that's really what we want. So on the last, like, like I said, on the last one, the myth of needing to train all the time to be in good shape, it increases the likelihood of being underfed, and we don't want that. Being underfed and malnourished can lead to possible energy, adrenal problems, and possibly lead to, lend us to metabolic adaptation. So that was part one today, you guys. Um, went over cardio and jogging to get in shape and why it may be more beneficial to adopt a moderate lifting routine and, and daily walking. And I just believe that we yield more desirable results for most people, body composition wise, health wise, mental clarity wise. Number two, the need to, the, how the need to consume protein and carbs immediately after workout is, is mostly a myth for most people. Unless you're training twice a day or you're a high level athlete or you had a very, very hard, intense lifting session, you, you can aim to eat whenever you whenever you get to your meals. So you don't need to rush out, get a protein shake, throw a rice cake in if, if, if it wasn't that intense. If you had a good, solid workout for 40 minutes, you can drive home, prepare your food if you have time, and eat it. You don't have to rush through that process to hit that eating window. We've, we, the research shows that is most, mostly a myth unless you are, like, a, like I said, a high-level athlete or training twice a day. And the third myth is that you need to train all the time to get in shape, to be stronger, to build muscle. And the truth is training all the time can increase your likelihood of being underfed and malnourished, leading to a host of other problems, and that it's much more beneficial and that you get great, great results come with just enough of a great or good stimulus from your training or your exercise or lifting and with optimized recovery and sleep. Say just two to four times a week at most, plus light walking would be a great regimen for most people to be in the best shape of their life and not to be pushing their their minds and bodies and adrenals too far in pursuit of something that they really could have if they put in less work. So we want adequate work, adequate response, get stronger, and then increase that capacity over time. So I appreciate your time here today, guys. This was Common Fitness Questions and Myths, Part 1, Episode 6. Um, I will start doing some more of these. I'll have a few more parts coming out. I'll usually do two to three at the most. So drop a comment if you, have, you guys have any questions. Is there any, if there's any common fitness questions or myths that you want to see discussed or, or talked about, then um, let me know. Send me a message or an email. I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Namaste.